Hi and welcome, this is Edison Abelar from Passion47 and in this video I'm going to talk to you about smoothing in Moto and how to save and export out your smoothing groups. Now this question came from Giordanis on YouTube and the question was is how do you use smoothing groups in Moto? Now in some of the other 3D applications it's well defined where smoothing groups are and and I know from experience there are very few resources on how to do this I think the the best resource I can think of was done by my man Wes um, or the 3D Ninja and that was God years ago that was done so this is going to be a nice comprehensive look at smoothing smoothing groups and exporting out that data because you can't do one without the other. So I'm going to go into Marmoset tool bag, show you what it looks like in an engine, and show you the difference between the two, and where if something does go wrong, you can fix it. So what we have here is a simple sludge hammer, something I created in ZBrush, just something cartoonish. You know, we don't want too many details. And I did all the retopology and UVing here in Modo. And if I jump into our topology window, there goes our topology. Now, something I did want to show while we're on the topic of smoothing is, is I had another question. It was, how do you smooth like in Topogun in Moto? Now, if you've never used Topogun, Topogun was definitely the best place to bake and do, uh, you know, low poly uh, meshes. It's just it was the best on the market. Moto has since been a replacement for us, uh, as well as baking meshes. There are a few applications out there, but Topogon's strength was definitely in creating retopology, and they had the ability to smooth a mesh onto another mesh. So in Moto, the way you, you do that is, is you come here, make sure that tools are selected, and towards the bottom you'll see this, this smoothing. You click on smooth, and then you'll have a few options here. There's only a few things that you really should pay attention to, and offset would be, I would say, number one. And the reason for that is, is when you do smooth, if I leave this at three and I click on the um, viewing space, you'll see this automatically snaps right to the background mesh. And the reason for that is, is A, I have snapping on, and when you're in the topology uh, window, Snapping to the background mesh is already enabled, so it just automatically just tries to snap to the mesh. Now, if I go ahead and hide our sludge hammer, you can see this is actually really good. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can do something like this. Now, I do have the offset set to 3. I'm going to set that to 1, and you'll see I click, and it gets closer to the mesh. So that's a good way for you to get started really quick on your... Uh, your retopology and smoothing. Now let's talk about what we're really here for and that's this is how do we do our smoothing groups? Well if I look at the low poly cage and I'm going to go into our UV real quick and make sure that our texture is selected and there goes our, our UVs. Uh, I can definitely have maximized more of this space but it's, it's fine the way it is. This is just a demo. And so you just, this is just so you see how the UVs are set up. If I go into our modeling tab now, actually I have to turn off our shading because I know that that's already on. Cool. All right, so what we have here is a nice shaded, I'm just bring up the preview render. You see how smooth all of this looks? It doesn't look like if I'm to grab these edges, you can see that we have hard edges here but when I when I look at this side by side you can see you can barely see those edges you can see this one here but the other side you can barely see the edges and that smoothness comes from our smoothing group and the way you use a smoothing group in Modo is, is you have to be in our shading to our render tree and you have to have a material set up so the first thing you're going to want to do is select whatever item you're working with hit the shortcut M which will bring in our polygon set material and you can name it I have a few already here and the first thing you want to do is, is you want to make sure that the smoothing is set once you have this smoothing set then you'll have the ability to then come back click on your material 
and you'll see down here in the surface normals I'm going to turn that twirl that down so you don't see that and you'll see here in our surface normals when you start off you'll probably see this zero and you'll see right away that that automatically made a change to our viewport and this is what you'll normally see you'll see this faceted look and the first thing that you can do is, is change these smoothing angles and the way it works is we're going to say we want 100% 100% smoothing when you're at a certain angle now you can keep increasing these angles I'm going to type in some numbers 50 you can see that we're, we're, we're starting to get you know some shading in here 100 nice so you can see that now the shading is starting to get pretty much like we had it before 200 now you can see after a while there really isn't a difference now once you have the shading angle let's say you you absolutely love this and you're like you know what this is what I want to export out I'm going to cheat real quick make sure I don't have something on awesome and I'm going to go ahead and export this out so oops to export you come over to your item list you right click and you click on export selected layers make sure it's just the layers we don't want anything else exported and we're going to choose OBJ now I've gone ahead and exported out this already actually you know what let's go ahead and export and hammer I'm going to call this one hard so I'm going to just re-export that out I'm going to open up mom set tool bag I'm just going to grab the hammer and drop it in there and boom that's odd you see one thing but another thing exports this is something that's extremely frustrating and you wouldn't know that it happens or you wouldn't know that you know it's a problem unless you were to export it out and you don't want this in a game because what will happen is, is I actually have normal maps that I created in Modo using this baking UI option I'll just bring this over I use this baking UI option and while in Marmoset I'm just going to grab uh, maps and I have let's see actually this one's already used and if you've never used Marmoset before I'm gonna drop a, a an unreal map on here just because it does a better job for um, PBRs and all I want to do is add our normal so I'm just dragging and dropping our normal map in here and as you can see it is so jagged that it's almost useless you know unless we absolutely need sharp angles like that you don't want to use these sharp angles so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into Moto and we're going to re-export out and this time we're going to export out a smooth version so what, what was the problem with this version well the problem that we had is is that our smoothing groups are here but the information isn't staying and the way you get the information to remain in Modo is as you come up to our vector maps or vertex map sorry and you come to this option set vertex normals and what this does is it actually bakes the normal information down onto the actual mesh so when I hit OK you'll see originally I came into this uh, into our, our list here and I clicked on other lists what I was looking for in other maps was our vertex normals just to make sure it wasn't there um, so now that that's there I'm going to re-export export selected same thing that we did before hit OK and now we're going to do the hammer smooth just to show you that it actually works I'm going to do the same thing we did before I just have two screens here so that's why it looks like I'm doing nothing on that screen I'm going to grab this and drop it in here now it looks like nothing happened but really it did voila so now you see how nice and smooth that is and what I love about Toolbag is, is it gives you an a render that you're probably gonna see in game and I say probably because there's a, uh, some variance but for the most part that's what you're gonna see now what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab this normal map and I'm going to drop it on here and boom now this is what you're looking for in game you want as you want these details to come in as sharp as possible 
um, without those extra lines. Now, if I, if I toggle this off and show you this one, now you can see all the faceted. And this is what we don't want for this. But let's say we do want that. How do you then use the surface normals to get both soft and hard variations? Well, you can, you can do that as well. And this is where we have our smoothing groups. Actually, we don't want to cancel. I'm just going to bring this to the other screen. So now that we've baked our, our smoothing data down, what we want to do then is, is go back in, to our list. Because I pulled this out, we're just going to have to add it. So you can just click this plus button. And we want info, uh, data list. And we, we know we want our vertex. So boom. So now this is bad. So the first thing we're going to want to do is come here and clear this. By clearing it, it gives us the ability to then make changes. So if I go ahead and go back to our shading tree, click on material, come back to properties, and now we can change this and you'll see this actually starting to change. Now if we if we go ahead and we rebake it, I'll show you this again, you'll see when I when I update this, it actually can't update. And that's because the vertex data is baked right onto the mesh itself. So that's the reason why I came back in here and now that I've set it, go ahead and clear it. So that's an, that's another thing that you want to make sure you watch is, is that if you do set it and you make updates, you're not going to get those updates. Not until you bake it again. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at smoothing groups. I know this is a long one, but bear with me. I want to make sure you get everything uh, in one shot. So you can really understand it, because it does make a difference, especially when you have a very short deadline. So let's say I go ahead and I'm, I want to smooth this out. So make sure we select our material. This might look a little weird, but um, we can actually throw the material inside of here so you can really see it. Go to Properties. Make sure we get rid of all those. And this is what we're looking for, smoothing. Take our smoothing up to 100. And what, we're go well, what I want to do is I want to make this portion a hard surface. So I'm going to select those polygons. And what, we're, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up to Geometry, Polygon, and assign or set Smoothing Group. So now we can just type in, we can say Rock A and set the Smoothing Group. Now you'll see automatically this is a different color different shape, but you can see this hard edge right there. Well, if I bring in our, our preview map, you'll also see there is a nice hard edge here. I can go ahead now and grab the other side because it works off of edges, and the way the smoothing groups work is this is one layer smooth, this is one layer smooth, but the difference between these edges is where you see the hard surface. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, go to Geometry, go to Polygon, and set a smoothing group. Now I'm going to call this Rock B. And boom. Now you'll see that when I, when I set these up, it's smoother along those edges, but the other spots are nice and hard. Now what you can also do is you can you still have access to change the amount of smoothing. And as you change the amount of smoothing, you'll see that the smoothing groups responds differently than the other sections. Now, for one more cool trick is, is you can actually set multiple smoothing groups. So if you come back down to Polygon and then you go to Set Smoothing Group, you see that it says Mixed Mode. And that's because it'll, it already knows that it's using two separate um, polygon smoothing groups, but if you want, you can actually set this to. Um, let, let's say we we're using whatever atom and whatever this one is. We know this plus atom. We can do that, and then it'll set a mix mode for us automatically. And that's how you work with smoothing groups. Now you can export this out the same exact way uh, we did before. Come back into our vertex map, 
and bake it down and then we can go back into, into mama set and then you'll have the difference between these two so i hope this helped you guys out a lot i know there isn't a lot of places you can go and find out all this information so i hope that this was a nice introduction to some of the lesser known parts of moto and look out for some more intense moto training from us in the near future we've been working on on this for for quite some time so there's a lot of subject matters that haven't been talked about that we're gonna do so i'm excited and i hope you guys are too this is edison abelard from passion 47 i'm out